In this tutorial, we'll take a look at the updated HLG Normalized Transform for DaVinci Resolve. Now, for some background, the HLG Normalized Transform was first created out of sheer frustration when I was trying to import HLG media into my timeline and I couldn't find an accurate transform to normalize the footage. So I developed the HLG Normalized Transform from scratch, basing it on the ITU BT2100 specifications and the BT2408 recommendations. Now let's take a look at the HLG Normalized Transform in use. I've already got a project open here and I've got a number of clips imported into the timeline. So let's start off in a non-color managed workflow. So I've got my color science set to DaVinci YRGB and my timeline color space set to Rec 709 Scene. So first thing we'll do is go ahead and load the DCTL OpenFX plugin. And we'll go ahead and load the HLG normalized DCTL. Now we are exposed to a number of parameters here. So the first one being the exposure correction, which allows us to adjust the exposure. We've got the color sign setting, which allows us to switch between ACCC and DaVinci YRGB. So let's change that to DaVinci YRGB. We have the HLG type, which allows us to choose between the different HLG implementations. So for this particular clip, I know that I exposed it at 21 IRE. So let's choose HLG BT2100. The next parameter is the HLG color gamut. And this allows us to choose the designated color gamut of the recorded media. Normally this is Rec 2020. However, there are some cameras that allow you to implement custom color gamuts. So let's leave it at 2020. And the next setting below that is the timeline color space. Now we have the ACES options, as well as Rec 709 and Rec 2020. And as of Resolve 17, we now also have DaVinci Wide Gamut as well. So let's change this over to Rec 709. And the next setting is the Timeline Gamma. So we have the usual settings from the previous version, including the ACES settings. And we now have a number of Gamma parameters, as well as DaVinci Intermediate. So let's go ahead and change this to scene. Now the next parameter is clamping and by default, it's set to clamp negatives to prevent any artifacts from showing up on cameras that sometimes encode HLG with negative values. Based on the parameter changes that we've done here, we can see that the footage looks quite normalized, even on the scopes. So let's go ahead and change to a color managed workflow. So I've gone down to DaVinci YRGB Color Managed, and for this tutorial, I've set the Color Managed preset to Rec. 709 with an output to Rec. 709 as well. Let's go ahead and change our clip. Now I've already preset a number of parameters here, with the exception of the HLG type. And for this particular footage, I know that it was shot using HLG1, so let's go ahead and change to HLG1. Now we can see in the scopes that our footage looks quite blown out. And the reason behind that is in a color managed workflow, Resolve will automatically detect the metadata and adjust the color settings accordingly. In our case, it's set to Rec 2100 HLG. So we actually need to bypass that. And straight away, the footage looks fairly close. However, I can see in my scopes that it's slightly blown out. So this is where the exposure correction comes in and we can adjust the exposure ever so slightly to bring it in line with the correct exposure values. All right, so now let's have a look at an ACES workflow. So I'll go ahead and change my color signs to ACES CC. And it's important to make sure that the input transform for the respective clips is set to no input transform. And for this particular tutorial, I've set the output to Rec 709. Now I need to adjust my settings to align with the ACES parameters. So the first thing here is to make sure that the timeline color space is set to ACES AP0. And we need to make sure that the timeline gamma aligns with the ACES settings. So in this case, I've got ACES CC. So let's go ahead and select ACES CC. And this particular clip was shot using Sony's HLG2 profile. So let's go ahead and adjust that. And straight away, we can see that the footage is normalized quite accurately. 
Now, the updated HLG normalized transform also includes a number of DCTL files to facilitate use in an ACES workflow. So let's go ahead and load one of the DCTLs. And you can see we've got a few options here. So we have the HLG BT2100, HLG BT2408, as well as Sony's HLG profiles. Now this particular clip was set to HLG BT2408, so let's go ahead and select that. And there you go, it's been normalized and it's already quite accurate. So that was a quick overview of the updated HLG normalized transform for DaVinci Resolve.